lost in our third game against Ever, but then we came back and beat both Origin and Ever in a best of three. It gave our team a lot more just confidence and trust in each other. That was really the first day where I feel like we really played together. Welcome back to day one of the spring NALCS playoffs. Let's get back down to business. The series stands at 1-1 after TSM rebounded from their early loss in the day with a convincing victory against Cloud9 in game two. I want to look at individuals this time around on each team that we think will have uh, more of a, a role in uh, their team taking the series moving forward. Yep, Hanser was the most underrated player coming into TSM, then quickly was realized to be one of the best players on TSM during the regular season, and then during this game again, was one of the best players on TSM. And now twice in a row, uh, by pick two or three, TSM are blind picking his top laner. Poppy first game, Maokai this one around. Mm -hmm. This time they got rid of GP so that that split push disparity wasn't as bad. And he was the cleanup god. He was the tank that absorbed all the damage, built seven straight armor items, and was unkillable. Yeah, he also built he the built seven straight. Yeah, he built seven. I mean, if, 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 think about it though, right? Cloth armor, cloth <laughs> armor, <laughs> chain <laughs> vest, oh, okay, 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 okay. I can see. I can, I can okay. see. I can see. On the other side though, he was actually building a little bit for the split push against Jensen, who last picked that Zed. He got yeah. counter pick against Azir, but then he ended up trying to split. Maokai was full armor. And Malka actually split a little bit more than the Zed did, and it was just a shutdown of the style that Cloud9 was trying to use to counter a team a team fight style composition, and it didn't work out for C9. Yeah, I think this is something that C9 should go back to more what they did game one, where yeah. they, even though TSM took their lanes early, C9 didn't focus on counter picks. They played more like a global style. Their comp was very synergistic. And then game two, they look more for the counter picks. Those don't work out at all. The most Jensen does is lane and force uh, uh, Bjergsen's flash out. So I think it'd be better if they went back to a more team focused style. Yeah, they didn't even really have enough wave clear to pull off a good split push composition, especially against an Azir. They would have right. gotten pushed in on that four man unit if Zed had actually opened up a turret. All right, Cloud9 back on blue side for game two. We're basically down to a best of three. We'll see what the teams have in store for us. The game's about to go live, so let's hand it off to our casters. On the way, High says even though TSM had a rough regular season, you can never count them out. TSM historically have always been good, even at playoffs, they've always shown up. Hence why they've been in the top two every single split. This split is a little bit interesting because if we were to play, the, like, play against TSM in the playoffs, normally it'd be at the end, not the very beginning. That's kind of a new development. They seem to be doing bad. They seem to not like playing well, making bad calls or team cohesion. I don't know what's going on with them, but uh, I hope they pick it up, but not enough to like, you know, beat us or anything. Well, it's a little bit of both right now. 1-1 one, one is TSM absolutely coming out of the woodwork for game two, but faltering game one. Both teams are experiencing the same thing right now. Yeah, I mean, TSM had a good reaction in this game, banning out Cloud9's strong strategy, but I kind of have a problem with what Cloud9 tried. They want to play the split push game and pull TSM apart, mm -hmm. but if the picks are not there and the strong comp for that is not there, don't try and play a weaker version mm -hmm. of a split push of a global map yeah. pressure game if the picks aren't there. Play a team fight game versus TSM. I think that if they you take strong team fighting comp here for Cloud9, they can go head to head with TSM in team fighting. The yep. skirmishing from Cloud9 has been there all season long. I think that if they actually, you know, drafted that way, they could take them. Yeah, during the regular split, Cloud9 drafted team comp team fight compositions frequently and they're great at them. They're very aggressive with the way they yep. force objectives. And they could easily do that here. But as we said, the bans will be different. There's no way TSM can ban the same things they banned without giving up Nidalee. So they banned Nidalee first. Yeah. That means either Lee Sin, Twisted Fate, or Gangplank could go through. Poppy gets taken away from Hauntzer, as well as the Graves there. Also Sven Scarin in that case. Global map pressure, so it looks like the Gangplank will be left up this time, unless they go for the double again. Yeah. But I feel like that's a waste at this point. Final one for Cloud9. These ones going much faster. Now the teams know and have kind of felt out these first two games. It's a Gragas. So the jungle's still getting a bit of a hit here. This would say they're looking to first pick Kindred. Um, With that Lee ban, right? Yeah, well, or well, they're, they're or trying, to, not. They're trying right. to bait these things out, right? Because there's still the Gangplank. So it's a very difficult decision for TSM to make here. Uh, they're trapped giving Cloud9 something they don't want to give them. Mm, they're trying to pigeonhole them into forcing the Kindred first pick now. They've done. And that's easily done, because we talked about the champion pools for you know, both Rush and High. I mean, it basically means Fenskaren's going to be on a lease again, uh, because the Gragas had been banned out, and mm -hmm. very heavy jungle pants. 
And we're not mentioning Graves as well. I mean, Graves is a flex ban. It is also a ban that hits the jungle and has been banned right. uh, several times here. It's something that Sven Skarin plays a lot in the jungle, and he's very good at in solo queue at least. Um, so this is Sven Skarin also being targeting in picks and bans. It's not just TSM targeting Rush, but also on the opposite side. Some respect here from Cloud9 throwing extra bans at Sven as well. 15 seconds for these. Rumble, obviously haven't seen it in a while. A little Rumble jungle, but it's not going to be going on that side. Still waiting for TSM. Now they're actually holding off until the last moment. We actually get to see some Corky play. Now the Maokai still locked in for Hauntzer. It was that good last game, so he's going to go with it again. Cloud9 had been getting Corky off the table, but this time they decided for some more targeted bans. It also will get Bjergsen off of Azir. It means TSM had good success power picking last time on blue side. This time they're going to power pick on red, which gets rid of a lot of their counter picking ability, but still gives them that Maokai that was so crushing last game. And getting him off Azir is not much of a success when he gets on the Corky, right? Yeah. Corky yeah. Yeah. puts out a ridiculous amount of backline magic DPS as well. Once again, TSM can easily diversify their uh, damage profile for the team. Um, it is technically also a flex pick that they could still move around if they really want to. Um, <laughs> I don't think Cloud9 will make the same mistake though and put full attack damage into this Maokai. But um, as of yet, they have not shown <laughs> the magic damage source. Yeah, well, it's not going to be Twisted Fate. We know that because it's banned. We thought maybe he was going to play LeBlanc the last time. LeBlanc's I mean, pretty okay into Corky. Or he can just pick Azir, Azir himself. Exactly. He did it last he game against, the against Liquid. <laughs> that would mean that Rush would have to be very good with his Kindred ultimates here because it looks like Balls would be on Gangplank then. And that, again, looks high as the only frontliner here for mm. the squad. So they have to rely on these abilities that block damage rather than a tank to soak damage. Yep. Uh, it's on the Unbreakable and the Lamps Despite. The Janna actually worked quite well for TSM in re-engaging their fights once they walked back a bit and kited it out. They'll choose that once again for Yellow Star and the Elise. Locked in for Svensk Garen, as in Game 1. Kind of what we thought he would do when he's pushed down to essentially the sixth available jungler with four bands and the Kindred picked away. Janna very successful for Yellow Star as well. Yeah. It's an easy They're going for pick. team fighting. It's going to be interesting to see what Cloud9 goes here. They'll... There's also the danger here with the Corky being picked so early. The double if just plays it. Uh, and therefore, Jensen can get counterpicked by Bjergsen. Mm -hmm. So if he does go his ear, yeah. it's very free for Bjergsen to just go Zed against it. And TSM wouldn't run into the same damage profile problems that Cloud9 did in the last game. More generic pick like that. Ah, so I was yeah. after the last patch, I was wondering if Oriana would make a comeback. She actually got some mana buffs uh, on her uh, Q. Yep. Um, and Jensen has been one of the players. Like, Oriana's never really a champion that takes over uh, a season or anything, but she always pops up. She's there <laughs> in almost every season. Right. Every once in a while, especially by players like Jensen, who have played her for so long. And he has had some of his best games yeah. on Oriana, taking over. Uh, for the team. Plus, it's a good all-around pick. You talked about getting counterpicked, the possibility of this flex. Corky kind of protects himself that way. Oriana can farm safely yep. against anyone that is a slightly bad matchup. Yeah, and Jensen had two of his best games of the split in week four. He played a back-to-back, -back, won a weekly MVP, and then it was just gone for the rest of his season. But it's always something he's going to be able to pick out when you just need a generic mid to round out any team composition. Bjergsen's still going to go with the Zed, so we'll see wow. the flex Corky down on the bottom side. But it's not as disastrous as, as if Jensen would have picked a weaker laner into it. Yeah, and the buffs to her command attack do let her reposition the ball more frequently uh, a bit earlier in the lane phase. It is more of a lane phase buff as well. So we'll see how the matchup actually goes now, because it is still you know good for Bjergsen. We'll see uh, how well Jensen can play it, though. It's never a fun matchup in general when you're energy versus mana. The resource pool always in favor of BRX in here. We'll see if he uses that aggression in the early game. He actually was able to go off on Azir a little bit last time with Sven Skarin going quite hard in the lanes. We're up 1-1 right now in the quarterfinals. Cloud9 versus TSM. We just heard High say it. This is usually the final matchup, but it's actually had to be played in the quarterfinals. So only one team is moving on to face counter Logic Gaming. Is it going to be Cloud9? Is it going to be TSM? C9 will be back on blue side for this game with TSM on the red side. The coaches will part ways with their players to listen into the comms during the game. 
but those are their final words. Really excited here to see uh, some more sneaky Jin as well. Yeah. Um, because Jin is such an interesting champion. Like, if you go and have these skirmishes that Cloud9 like to take, he can back off afterwards, and you think you've gotten yeah. away, escaped with Half Life or something, and the snipes come through if uh, Sneaky's accurate. Calling the curtain down. Tell us who you think is going to be moving on to the semifinals. Send hashtag C9Win or hashtag TSMWin. We'll update the poll in just a bit, as always. Everybody waiting. Game three coming up. And we are about to be on to the rift. Cloud9, as I said, coming off the blue side now. Fared well from game one here, but could not find the win in game two. We'll see who gets this number three to take the momentum. Yeah, Cloud9 this time around bringing a lot more tools uh, to the table that they can use in team fight scenarios. Think about the amount of area that Crowd9 can control. They've got Braum plus Gangplank right there is a lot of offensive control. And then they obviously have the defensive control of Kindred. So there's a, a lot of abilities that they can use to try and control the battlefield uh, and force TSM, you know, if they are into a grouped up scenario into a bad spot. I do still think they could have problems killing the Maokai in team fights. Yeah. Orion is not your sustained damage type of mid laner, more of an enabler and a burst champion come late game but not necessarily extended DPS. She does make it easier to kill the back line if she lands a good shockwave, though. Yeah. And typically that happens when you have a delivery system of some kind. What's interesting, though, is when Jensen did play it twice in week four, uh, he was able to just deliver it himself. He, did, <laughs> like, he was making amazing initiations with the shockwave, so Jensen is a tier above most other Orianna players. Yeah. I always like to point out things like that where you need to remember midway. Okay, we're just going to have another standard lane swap here as it happens, though. But, like, especially mid-game when the team fights are coming very quickly, there are a lot of things to keep track of. Oriana Ball sometimes gets lost. I got 16 gold there, I think he got. Gold. Yeah, he was able to steal one of the small ones. Spence Karen did smite. Who gets oh, wait, this? Big one. <clears throat> well, Rush doesn't. Uh, I mean, he just kind of gave that to him. What was that? He'd already smited the big one. I think he didn't want to take much more damage. I mean, you just walk away from it, and make Yellow Star do, or yeah. make Yellow Star do all the work himself. But if you're just gonna <laughs> auto, like <laughs> yeah. take your hands off Be the like, keyboard oh, and auto, let's see who gets it. Anyways, that's only 16 gold. Very small. <laughs> small thing. It's the tilt, Kobe. Mm. It's the, no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, still be fine. We saw a little bit of the same thing happening last game between the junglers as well. They fare just perfectly here as we get into the laning phase. Cloud9 to the bot side, and looks like TSM's gonna answer a bit more accordingly this time. They did well last time, but it's just matching it, I should say, not more accordingly. We've seen this before. Um, no say that. big tweaks here, although Spence Karen's just a little bit ahead in the jungle. One small wrinkle is that the mm -hmm. Kindred mark did spawn on Rush's side this time. Mm. Uh, so he'll be able to pick that up. Ooh. Everyone does count. I don't think the harass will matter much for yeah. Gangplank unless they decide to get into a second turret take race. Sometimes if one team is far ahead of the other team and recognize they have a better team composition for taking the turrets, uh, they'll go for that. But neither one of these teams has anything crazy like a Jinx that kills turrets super fast. So I think they're just going to do the normal trades. Yeah, now let's see if they actually swap um, to continue the trading. Because we did just see them uh, last time around. They answered after first turret down right. instead of uh, kind of the more normal option where um, both side outer turrets are traded and you swap your ADs over to the other side. Last time we saw them meet up and only trade one turret each for the very early stage. Yep. Now, like TSM broke the gentleman's agreement and said, no, we're going to defend that turret. Jensen finding some pressure, Svenskeren in mid. I don't know. Wait a bit of a bait. Bait. Uh, The shield's going to be big here. It's definitely going to prevent the death on the side of TSM. That's why C9 does not want it. Howling Gale missing. Kind of provides some extra trade damage, but they don't win that overall. That actually forces, yeah, big cooldown here. Balls has to use his teleport. Yeah, well, the lane isn't necessarily in a position for him to farm. I think it's going to change the distribution of farm somewhat. Well,. Like, I'm trying to think of, it, I, I agree with you that teleport this early is a big cooldown, but in this specific instance, it's, what is it delaying? What it, what it forces is Cloud9 can't answer if TSM decided to load one side of the map, basically. <laughs> and that does put pressure on TSM, which TSM haven't really stepped up as far as being super proactive with early plays. 
And so it kind of puts more t pressure on TSM. Hey, there's a freeze up top uh, for Cloud9 that uh, they're just starting to switch now with Sneaky. Yeah. He can't join if you force something on bottom, but TSM haven't really been the team to try and force something, even if there is, you know, a teleport discrepancy here. Exactly. Um, it's been Ball so does much. Have some wave clear. It's been so much trading back and forth, but I mean, especially in the early game, the gangplank would be very vulnerable, and the Elise and Maokai are tremendously strong tower divers this early on in the game. So yep. if if it were to be setting up a play, you would expect it to be Hauntzer teleporting in to force a mm -hmm. turret dive with Fence Garen. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like Cloud9 also, they don't even have to switch balls over to that side. Uh oh, Jensen's out of mana and out of. Oh, oh Hauntzer, flash twisted advance. There's going to be first blood. Hauntzer involved in that one. Did Doublelift get there too? He did. Good assist as well for TSM. Rush staying out on the map really long time. His first play, I feel like he was talking to Jensen. Either Jensen or Rush wanted to turn that play around in the mid lane, ended up forcing mm -hmm. Jensen's flash backwards. And then here, he's just kind of in the mid lane. Hauntzer doesn't even have to burn his teleport, but he has the freedom to be anywhere else because he has the teleport to correct. So in a small way, that is a bit of a trade back for the summoner spell. And he still has his teleport, so it's morely just a cost. <laughs> More TSM opens up these lanes too. It's going to be difficult for Balls and Sneaky to get those calls stacked up and cleared up as well. Top lane shouldn't be too much trouble here. Quite far out is Sneaky, but he's going to try to give him some backup. In terms of Yellow Star just floating along the side. It looks like they're going to give more coverage and vision. They actually are going to get ganked here. Rush is already in position for countering, so uh, TSM make the wise choice not to overextend it there. Six, six, six mid. We'll have to see when this Gangplank Cannon Barrage is going to start making some options open up for Cloud9. Already pressured here on the top turret. Don't have the vision to dive, so it definitely won't be yet. I mentioned before, the Cullings kind of put a timer on this one, so Cloud9 actually looking to take a breather here in the early game and get themselves farmed up. No real cold discrepancy between either team just yet. You see double lift and balls trying to go toe to toe here in the bot lane. No real gr uh, ground gain on either side, just nope. farming away. No real deep vision either, so uh, gonna have to back all the way off. I think Yellowstar is gonna get distracted by the ward first one, interrupt it, but um, good uh, retreat there by Balls as Spence Garen was treading to the side of the map. Yeah, balls had hit level five a little bit before Haunter, but that's punished the no flash here. Equalizing out a bit. And yeah, I think they should look to continue punish this flash GPS with Knight and all for Bjergsen. Jensen always has them. I mean, he always dodges at least uh, It is a little bit easier on Orianna because you can mm -hmm. speed uh, boost yourself there. I think at a certain point playing against Jensen on Elise, you'd actually just want to walk up and then just spider and then human form Q him before even trying for a cocoon because he's always going to be looking to juke back and forth and that will right. allow you to get into a range to at least spell cast. That's a lot of poke. He's going to take a shadow. Quite painful. The hits come in. Bjergsen's actually going for lane dominance. There's the kill coming in. Lambs or Spite's going to get a quick save onto Ooh. this one. Invulnerable as it pops. And Jensen stays alive. The pressure here is going to be since, since Garen sends that alt now down. They can kind of hang out. Jensen low on mana. He's had to start with the Seeker's arm guard. So it's this is why yeah. it's a tricky matchup. And where do we just saw Rush go down? Now where is he again? Back to the mid lane, soaking up experience with with Jensen. And that's the thing. Anytime you show as a jungler and you have to cover for a laner who's getting pressured like that, mm -hmm. it just feels bad because even though you get lane minions, you give up a bunch of your jungle. Spence Garing jumps right in, very smart by him, goes and takes away. A red buff camp here, uh, also going to go and add some support to this bottom side for double left end. Yellow star, looks like he's going to recall. They should alert him that high is coming, but that ward will see everyone. Yeah, and it's looking like TSM has the laning advantage from these swaps. I think a lot of it just has to happen from having the teleport advantage for so long and Rush having to cover a lot of these lanes, but 11 CS up top. An assist in the middle, even CS, and then mm -hmm. 13 CS down on the bottom side. All things add up to a thousand. As well, these are the moments where w they have gone back, and there was a period of time where TSM was kind of roaming free, but the wards are going to start hurting C9. It's very dark on the map compared to about four vision. Those pink wards from TSM already encroaching on yeah, the C9 side. That is a good point, because usually, so here's the thing about low ward stats. Uh, if you're a team that 
always gets ahead early, and then it's very easy to play when ahead without having to expend much on vision because you can protect the pink orbs you have. You also can push up minion waves, which give you vision. Right. And you also have the pressure to move into the enemy jungle. But playing from behind and having low ward stats is a very different issue. Yeah, but now when TSM is pushing the tempo, Cloud9 doesn't have the greatest vision of this, and they could and potentially they're getting pressured. A little vision on Senskarin. They're waiting for that dive, but I don't, even with that, I'm unsure if Cloud9 would be able to stop the power that TSM is kind of rolling with right now. The package yeah. was there. They're going to back off for Dragon. They're running Gangplank top lane, and they have double culls on their team. Yeah. As well as going the defensive early items for Brian. And really, Cloud9 is not looking to team fight right now, and TSM is. Double lift uh, should have finished that, but his package was going to run out, and now they're actually in a bit of danger of getting it stolen. Uh oh. He's got smite. He's got it. <laughs> Wait, is he it? has spite. Didn't want to use it. Challenge. He's got to challenge someone later. He's <laughs> it on high. All right. I think we're going to fight here. Someone ring the bell. Okay. High flash is out. Rush stuck. He's going to be able to vault over the wall. That's a repel and a flash from Yellow Star to as well. Carry double lift with a bit of speed. We see high going down on the Braum. That's a kill for Haunter. Rush is going to fall as well. Jungler on jungler action. And now Hanser looks to pick up another one. Does he not have flash as he throws the ball over the wall? The chase. There's no pursuit from the sapling. The sapling's looking for him. Yeah, this whole time, the <laughs> Behind you. ultimate is up as well. Maybe they use their globals here. Curtain call. Oh. Gangplank. They should be able to block it up for this. And Panda Barrage goes down. A nice Ooh. little, like, slow oh. wombo of damage. Yeah. But it doesn't come out really easy, able to uh, easily able to dodge I mean, there. That was a, actually a weird, really weird scenario where Cloud9 got baited in. I think by the fact that uh, Double Lift did leave. I think they got a little bit baited in too by the fact that Svenskaren wasn't smiting. They're like, oh, maybe we yeah. can steal it. He didn't execute <laughs> it. Let's go. Uh, then he just challenging smites, gets but, him really low, and like all of TSM is there. Uh, you're not going to match the teleport from the Maokai and the Gangplank at this stage in the game. The Gangplank <laughs> is going to be much weaker. Yeah, I mean... They would have loved to have that kill oh, actually oh. go over to Bjergsen, but the <laughs> sap magic right there. Going into that, as we said, they don't want wow. to fight this, yet they go overextend, go for the steal, and they do fight it, and then expend a bunch of summoners, lose uh, kills over it, and are in a much worse position now. And I want to jump back just a few minutes to our conversation on wards as well, because like you said, when Cloud9 is ahead, it doesn't matter that they have low warding, because they actually have like the second highest jungle control of all teams in North American LCS, which is just the overall jungle minions they kill, uh, the, the overall share of jungle minions in the game, that Cloud9 kills more, which yeah. indicates that they are constantly in the other team's jungle. Right. So them being there is their wards. They're essentially human wards walking through the enemy team's jungle, and they don't get surprised by people. Whereas when you look at TSM, they had the third highest wards placed in the regular season and a very low wards cleared percentage, which indicates that they're playing scared a lot of the time. Yep. They're sitting back on their hind legs and just maybe trying to react, but they're not clearing anything, so it's hard to surprise people. Now they kind of have the perfect storm, though, because Cloud9 has lost their pressure, and instead of defensive wards, TSM is placing offensive wards. So they're getting vision, and Cloud9 Cloud has teleport advantage for this fight, though. Ooh, nice oh. shockwave. That's a that's a bye bye Jensen. Oh, One last hit. He's able to get the spin to win on, and it looks like they may be able to finalize the kill on balls as well. Very low. High jumps in after almost losing balls. He's trying to get the rest of the team in position to guard the turret, and he does so with the and half that of his HP. was with teleport advantage. TSM come out with the kill. Also, yeah. they stopped the objective. Cloud9 started a huge, huge power play there from TSM. Hauntzer got to just continue farming because he can't join. He had no teleport. So that means a uh, very, very big swing here because Hauntzer's teleport will come up first. Plus, they got the extra kill. Bunch of control. And Sven goes in for another red buff counter. Yeah. Very big outplay there from TSM. Goes from bad to worse for Cloud9. And with the double call start and the gangplank, the, the level 8 gangplank teleporting in with a phage and a sheen is not really yeah. a threatening thing. Shot uh, him once. <laughs> yeah, he did it. <laughs> As he jumps back to his shadow afterwards, Bjergsen gots the kill onto Jensen yet again, who has not been able to complete his own yet. Uh, this is looking a little dangerous for Cloud9 here. Look at back in the top lane. Once again, Hauntzer on the Maokai, 2-0-0. Has been quite useful in all the plays, except for stealing Bjergsen's last kill. And look at that Rod of Ages build, too. <laughs> Mm -hmm. He's going to have some extra damage in this one as well. Hey, he's definitely feeling confident on Old that school. champion, and he is showing it within his play. The team is not afraid to keep engaging on these instances that Cloud9 has been giving them. 
We'll have to wait for Cloud9 to keep farming up. Five stack left on Sneaky, 22 left for Balls, and Jensen looking to get to a core item. Still a good amount of damage that they can hit CSM with to get that late game shockwave, but that's the idea now, is almost late game for them to get that. 14 minutes in right now, one minute on Dragon. Cloud9 should be able to kind of contest, but it'll be dangerous. Well, I think it'd be actually, this is actually TSM's game uh, right now. Like this stage of the For game, sure. they have a lot of advantages. They have a Zed who can split lurk. They have the, tele the extra teleport. Um, and their three-man squad is extremely resilient here with Jennifer disengage. Uh, Corky and Zed both have escapes of their own. So TSM are set up very well if they want to continue to make gains using a 1-3-1. Uh, and they do get that mid turret down. Uh, the only outer turret left is on the bottom side. And Hanser shoved that all the way in. Now Balls is pinned there. He doesn't have teleport. The only thing he can do is add his ultimate to a team fight that breaks out. And remember last time there was a team fight, TSM won at 4 versus 5, even with the teleport coming in. Right. Yeah, meanwhile, they can just take Rift Hell control because, I mean, until a Zonius comes in or until someone gets a little tankier, Bjergsen has to be absolutely respected here. This is the point in the game that Jensen didn't reach last game on Zed. He was never ahead of the itemization curve. Bjergsen could got Zonius very quickly, therefore the Zed never had kill threat. But right now, Bjergsen has kill threat on everyone on Cloud9. Maybe Rush can put down his kitted ultimate and stop the death mark temporarily and then die afterwards when it comes down. So Cloud9 totally on their back foot. Yeah. Their calls are three CS away from both being completed. They'll need to complete those, get Essence Reaver on Sneaky, get Trinity Force on balls, and then still stall out a little bit longer. Uh, and by that point, it might be too late because Haunter could have tanked up on Maokai. And we've already talked mm -hmm. about the overall damage problems Cloud9 might be running into. So once again, TSM is actually looking pretty good. We gotta look at the fact, as you were saying, Bjergsen can kill everybody. That's allowable because C9 actually isn't running Ball's tanks anymore. They're not running anything that can really stop Bjergsen. So he goes back to the Zed. He goes back to things he can carry the game on. 102, feeling confident about it so far. Nah, not up in CS in the lane, but up in map control for the rest of the team. Already starting that split in the bottom lane with a little bit of pressure here in the jungle from the team. Top lane is all Haunters. And looks like Balls will have to respect that. All right, as we get closer to the mid game here, we do have to keep in mind the game-changing abilities that Cloud9 have on their mm -hmm. side, though. Yes, they are behind. They can turn this around with the gangplank explosion of the barrels, even though we only have Trinity Force. Whoa, Yellowstar oh. again! I feel like we always have that moment in a TSM game where you're just uh, like, what's going on? Yellow Star's dead. Yeah, it's happened in both <laughs> of these games he's on, John, and we're talking about TSM being in full control, and then it's like, oh, wait a minute. He's somewhere he absolutely shouldn't have been uh, because they were just setting up for the Dragon that was going to be safe anyway because of the general positioning of the game. Uh, a small bit of gold back to Cloud9, but yet another Dragon and still control the TSM. Anyways, as I was saying... <laughs> there oh, we go. Oh, mind. Duel. The Roa versus the Trinity Force. Oh, that's a lot oh. of pain. Oranges versus saplings. Should have it here. There's the shot, the slow. Uh, he doesn't know if he wants to go in or not. Little trial by nice fire. Time. See if he can heat it right under his toes. There's oh. the burn. He's going for the kill. Sapling. Oh, he doesn't get it that time. Someone finds out how to shut down the Whoa. Haunter, but Sven Skaren not too happy about it. Also, not too much is going on across the map. A bit of a roam over from Jensen. He'll stop. Actually, bottom lane is a whole bucket of fun, and it's going to be one going turret. down. And then the you brook. lose Sneaky, looking to lose high on this one, and they get the turret. Ooh. You are very right, chat. Top lane is going to be Rush as Hello? well. Coast Rush. to coast. So We're going to need some body bags. Dead Cross flat. mapping, by the way, which was what Cloud9 had control of at the very start of the series. Even though Cloud9 has the gangplank ultimate, they lose cross map fights to TSM. A fight happens in the top lane. TSM has a stronger 2v2 in the bottom side. And that kill pressure power spike moment for Bjergsen is capitalized. Yeah, on. the kill pressure bottom, I was kind of expecting the kills there for TSM with the Zed Corky. But up top, when Rush got outplayed, oh. he had flash up. Uh, versus Sven Skaren. Anyways, here's what happened down bottom. Zed with the dive there from Bjergsen. Nice play. Uh, double lift uh, applying the extra damage as well and taking the turret in the process. But this is the crazy uh, one. It's a full range cocoon. He chased it's flash done. up. I mean, Rush, you have to you have to react to that. Yeah. A lot of times Rush just has so much confidence in his ability to dodge skill shots or that the enemy is just going to miss. But this time he was up against the wall, so there's not much juking he actually could have done. Yeah. And the stun prevents him from being able to put down his lamb's respite. Also, the play in the bot lane to reflect is just you can see Cloud9 is not ready. TSM is in their head. They're ready to pull the trigger. Cloud9 not expecting that. Very 
pretty interesting this far into the game with the advantage that TSM has. TSM is going to look to grab onto that as soon as they can get it once again. There's Yellow Star doing some crazy stuff. Hopefully he stays alive in this situation. 20 minutes on the clock, 7 to 2. Still looking to get kills around the board. Rush has those two kills right now, and Sneaky's oh going to be the next dear. one. Just being too close Dead every time walking. has been the reason for somebody going down. Being too close. That's uh, it. Again, the thing that people always point out about Jin, you know, even though everyone's so hyped up to see Sneaky's Jin, mm -hmm. you know, he, he's a low mobility champion. Zed loves praying on those low mobility AD carries. Yeah. Once again, takes out Sneaky. Knows he has no flash from the last time. The TSM get to close the loop here. Continue applying pressure. Maybe in a late game team fight where he has more base health and Jensen can throw a Oriana shield on him, they can yeah. stop Bjergsen a bit. Oh. But when they're in this split up set, it's not going to happen. And Bjergsen is continuing to snowball this really heavily. He is essentially 1,500 gold ahead of anyone else on Cloud9's team. 8,500 there for Zed. As closest would be 7,300 for Gangplank. And that's because of the barrels a little bit. Get that spider. <laughs> hey. Whatever they can do at this point, another game where TSM has the lead at 15 minutes, completely turning this on. And by all lanes, they've basically come out ahead. And again, Svenskaren is able to take down Rush in the jungle. 201, 92 to 72. Something we thought would go completely different throughout this series. Yeah, now I would like to see TSM actually concentrate their vision control because it's kind of spread out right now. Okay, double lift though. Yeah, it takes a bit of a bad fight, but he is able to Valk flash away and avoid the ultimate. He's still going to force a base from Rush. So he might be able to keep up a little bit of pressure. Once again, they really love having Hanser over in those side lanes, which seems a little bit strange at this point. You'd think they'd have Bjergsen off split pushing because Haunter's arrival to the team fights is going to be late. But they got away with it in game two, and they're yeah. getting away with it again here. It's almost like Bjergsen's ability to kill somebody is just that great that <laughs> they can keep him in the mid lane. Give him He's the like, I'd rather just kill someone. Just make him more powerful. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, the they the one three run is exceptional when you're ahead like this. So they can use both of them and split push the side lanes, and their three-man squad can disengage almost anything with the amount of vision they have. Yep. They have both sides of the jungle lit up. Here comes the teleport play, actually. Hauntzer going to try and catch Rush. Flying around, quick. slowed by Wolf. The flash prep to the Whoa. wall. Hello. It's a big reach. Holds the smash, letting the Twisted advance, lock him down for as long as possible. Very nicely done by Hauntzer. Now they have to look at the fight once again. Bjergsen ready to fly over the wall on the outside. And here's the bot lane of TSM now approaching the fight. And Cloud9, they're actually stepping quite far out from the turret, taking quite a bit of poke. It looks like TSM says, we're spending too long here. Let's actually pressure the objective. Yeah, I think that kind of goes to show how far ahead TSM is. Hauntzer committed really far for that fight mm -hmm. and wasn't punished for it at all. In no. fact, TSM then had a chance to commit further and didn't do it. And now they're baiting a fight here. Bjergsen is behind Cloud9. What's his target? He has Jensen. Jensen's shield is up. Sneaky's right, right on the Sneaky. That's the exhaust goes <laughs> oh down. He's boy. left by himself. The double kill coming in for Bjergsen. That should be Baron. 6-0-2 right now. TSM are absolutely dismantling Cloud9 right now. Rush is making his way over with balls, but... They have Shockwave still. So if they wanted the full hero play, oh! maybe. But it, they're, they're so far behind here. The Shockwave, he doesn't have Zonyas yet, but still dicey. Rush oh, has spike. Oh, Yellow Star on the pit. He's going to take oh! the AoE damage. Oh He's going to be going down. So Rush picks up a little gold here, but it drops right out of his pocket into the hands of Double Lift. And they are just exchanging checks oh, back man. and forth. TSM make out. Oh! <laughs> Good guy, double lift. He's like, Baron is pissed, pissed, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more time. This is a this is a Get very much lawn, continuously going for broke for C9. It was set up to be a trap. That's why Bjergsen hid in the tribe rush. They very easily kill Braum. Sneaky is a low mobility carry, as we talked about. And then they get the kills and turn back for Baron. This, this is actually Rush comes really all the way messy. back. This turns into a super messy fight because they thought <laughs> it was going to be a little bit clean, but they're like, wait a minute, he still has Shockwave. And this oh, is man. kind of the split call, right? I, double, lift like there, so double Lift there definitely deserves credit for that Valkyrie because Falls was coming to deliver the Poro. 
and Double F barely got out of that shockwave. But then Rush goes right into the Baron pit. Got the kill from With Yellow the repel, Star. it means Baron's going to finish him off. Yeah. And, and how does Baron stay so angry throughout this? Because does something hit him to make him... That was He was strange. angry. Either way. That damn kids. Big win for TSX. Stop fighting around me. Making all that noise. Uh, 6 0 3 3 0 5 one of those two members we said would have the highest kind of resource put into them in the game. Bjergsen double lift at it again. 14 to 4 and 25 minutes on the clock. TSM with a very nice 7,000 gold lead. And now they continue to pressure these leads. We kind of question, would they be able to? And yes, they very much are. Also making a very good case for themselves once again for that playoff TSM style. Coming into the, the back half of the split, three wins, six Ooh. losses into what could be a quick quarterfinals against Cloud9. Here onto Balls, he's not getting out of this one alive. And he will be going down quite fast. Yep. Yerkson Zed. Just one after the other right now. When a team is one through one you, you have to be able to track the rotations from lane to lane. And there is a non-fully upgraded Sightstone item, so High can only pack three wards at once. And there's no Tracker's Knife or Sightstone on Rush. Right. for his kindred. So he, he did the challenging spike because he loves to get aggressive, get on people's faces, but when that backfires, they have no presence and no way of knowing where Bjergsen is going to be. So he's very easily been able to just walk down lanes. No one is ward. There's no wards there. And just surprise Cloud9 over and over again for seven kills. Yeah. Yeah. Kill potentials ticking back up. Is Ignite almost ready? Let's see where they go from here. Cloud9 trying to clean up waves. And you can see Bjergsen already. He's like, oh, look, Sneaky off by himself. Can I kill him? Not just yet. I mean, TSM right now, they have so many options. Uh, once again, I think they should actually uh, collapse their vision into this top side around Baron because they can bait so easily. And mm -hmm. Hanser has teleport, so all you do is split with Hanser uh, and Bjergsen, and you ward up Baron. And then if C9 ever even come close to Baron, you just teleport in with Hanser, you get an easy flank. Uh, you Whatever, whatever happens, it's a win-win yeah. scenario for TSM. Either they get Baron or they get the fight they want because they're so far ahead in gold and they can crush the team fight. And they can't even really make TSM think differently about this. You saw High try to add pressure to the mid lane, but Bjergsen just gets free time in the top here. And now Cloud9 has to react. They get themselves down to the Hunter bottom has side. Home guards. He's waiting in the fountain to use his teleport right now. Good yeah. call. Good eye, Kobe. It's probably a Baron bait of some kind. There is upgraded sweeper onto Svenskaren. There is three pink wards in the inventory of TSM. So they're going in. Teleports behind him. This is the fight. Oh, face check of face checks. It looks like they get themselves to a somewhat safe spot, but that TP has already come in. And Cloud9's health bars are absolutely melting. Lambs were spite the last thing saving them from being six feet under here. And there's a kill onto Sneaky, following up with Rush. Jensen is just barely with enough mana to keep himself in the fight. High is down, and now TSM runs for the fight once again. Or the Baron, once again. is taking this Zed play to the next level. A true ninja here. Everyone on TSM dodging that shockwave as well. And he gets the kill on the exit with his shadow. And then Baron, Baron almost gets him again. Baron's still pissed at <laughs> yeah. Baron hates ninjas. Bear not a Bjergsen fan. <laughs> Trying to kill him twice in a row here. Uh, but yeah, TSM, total control. This is actually a very well-baited fight. Cloud9 does check a little bit early, probably earlier than they had to, but Hanser gets in. He's a massive tank, yep. so he gets to buy time while the Kindred Dolphin is up. Bjergsen goes Saves deep the through. Then Once he, he gets hit by the Dox, he will go back. The Exhaust the, will run out. Look at the double kill here. And oh, then he will Shuriken through to get the Braum as well. Yep as the death mark killed Sneaky. Just such crisp Zed play. It's like riding bike for him. When Bjergsen came over, these were the kind of plays we saw. It was kind of like that has dipped down. We haven't really seen the Zed Bjergsen come out once again. He was put on a show for us here in the quarterfinals at 9-0-4. Participated in 13 out of those 18 kills around the map. And he has the high SCS in the game. Still looking to make pressure on the map by himself. The team knows he can do that roam. It looks like TSM is just oh. waiting to put the final touches on. Rush had a flash. Just got caught out again. Didn't see what happened, but the no. cooldown has he's, been burned. He's in a very toying with the with the uh, enemy mode. And That's the enemy is much bigger at this point. Exactly. If I had to guess, he would have had to flash away from Hanser, just worried about mm -hmm. a twisted advance being clicked on him. He needs to be alive for the next fight. 
missed skill shots don't even deter TSM that much. They still have enough power to just stand tall, take these turrets down. Sneaky damage on the backside there. He is forced to go back to base. We'll have a little bit more free time. Bottom wave is just a few ways away from being on that turret right now. And they're going to go for the top lane high. He should be going down here. Saves himself with Locket and a little bit of defense. Yep. TSM is they're in a brick wall here. They're actually oh. looking for kills and not getting what they could be. This may be one of those kills they're looking for. Yeah, well, Hauntzer is in. He's taking a lot of turret damage. Monsoon. The lead is there. Nice Monsoon yep. there by Yellowstar to head off the rest of the Cloud9 team and keep them alive. Bjergsen kill balls at the start of that fight. Hauntzer goes in. Oh. Curtain call can only hit a few. And it's... Does almost no damage to full health right targets. now, yeah. No infinity edge he's, he's three levels behind double lift, actually, so Woo. really a big reason you're seeing that not huh? even hurt. <laughs> this is a stomp at this point. It really is. It may be five minutes slower, but it's consistent. Twice TSM has now done this to Cloud9. Definitely playing on their mentality here in the quarterfinals. A very strong first game and showing from C9, but they have not been able to find that yet again. And TSM will now be able to take two in a row, just 30 minutes on the clock this time. 23 to four in an even stronger fashion. TSM take game three of the series and look to go game point. Yeah, they're now one win away from making it to the semifinals yet again after their worst regular season in their franchise's history. Right. A big change, that uh, mentality shift after that first game. And they have been able to produce results after coming from backstage. Cloud9 now need to figure out a way to do that for themselves. Take a breather, reset, forget about those. But Cloud9, play yeah. Best. They seem to be falling apart a little bit. Rush, I think, in particular, mm -hmm. needs to take a moment and refocus. Yeah, Rush Agreed. in particular, Agreed. like you said, was getting dismantled in that game from the entire side of TSM, whether it was Bjergsen, whether it was a Maokai being randomly there, right. he just was not in the right positions. And Sven Skarin, even though four total jungle bans happened in the game, mm -hmm. the jungler Kindred was first picked for Rush, Sven Skarin had the better game here on Elise. Yeah. Once Even again. after having a struggle on Elise in the first game, it didn't seem like it's really what was working for him. Not all the cocoons were hitting, but didn't phase any of Team Solo mid. They played, like you said, League. We haven't seen this split. I mentioned before, three and six on the back half to Cloud Nines, six and three on the end of the split, but it hasn't phased yeah. TSM in the playoffs here. And I didn't really expect Cloud9 to lose these games in this fashion. Like, we knew that their wards low, being low could be, like, theoretically their weak spot, but they were right. so good early game that it hadn't been punished. So TSM has been picking really good lanes or really strong early jungle pressure, and they've been able to punish that weakness of Cloud9 because we see when Cloud9 is falling behind in these games, they do not have the practice setting down defensive vision right. in order to stop these roam plays. So it's got to be a big pivot for Cloud9 strategy-wise, I feel like, if they want to come back. Yeah, to even in the game that Cloud9 won, they had a big mistake early in the game uh, and were just able to recover. Very true. They kind of just went back at it, got it to work for them. We'll see if it works for this one. And we get a game five, or it's going to be match point for TSM. Right now, we're going to turn it over to Dash and our analysts. Thank you very much, Riv. TSM flipping this series on their head all of a sudden up 2-1. Uh, Zyrene, I know you want to jump on the back end of that warding point and keep us updated on those statistics. Yeah, because I think it's the big thing that TSM has over Cloud9. And even just judging by their losses, I'm going to go through the difference here in warding at the end of the game. In game one, it's just a 24 difference. And then in game two, 18, and then 22 in the last one. So Cloud9 actually just wards slightly less when they win. But when they're losing, they still have that same tendency of placing very little wards. Uh, Yellow Star prioritizes getting his four stack uh, sight stone item, whereas High does not. Mm. And then we saw in the previous game that uh, the jungler, Sven Skarin, actually went for the tracker's knife yep. and just tried to help the vision. And in this game, sight stone. This game, sight stone as well. So we're seeing that TSM are playing to that and saying, Hanser and Bjergsen, you guys are where our damage is. Same with Double Lift. We just need our jungler and support to actually fill these roles of providing vision. And C9, they have a carry jungler, and then they have high on support who places the least wards out of any support. So with these stats and these strategies in mind, let's take a look at Champ Select again. We saw one major difference on the side of Cloud9 between Game 1 and Game 3, seeing as how those were their blue side games. Yeah. They drop the corky ban for a poppy ban freak yeah What's i don't on? i don't understand so game one you played gp into poppy and you won the matchup okay the game snowball because of other reasons but like you were fine with that game two you say tsm are happy to early pick maokai who is 
roughly as good as Poppy. Honestly, it, it's pretty it's pretty close. And then game three, you're like, all right, well, we know they picked Maokai. Let's ban that Poppy anyway. Where yeah. We knew we could yeah. beat it. And, and the ban they dropped for that was Corky, which right. TSM grabs early on, plays as a flex pick. No longer can you counterpick the matchups all that well on blue side anymore. Lo and behold, Corky goes to the bot lane. Zed shows up. Oops. Oops. This team that was picking... Mid lane, first round red side, like every game, mm. now gets to counter pick you with Zed into a team full of squishies and a support that can't actually disengage Zed properly. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, Bjergsen took over the game and it was brutal. 11 0 6. He had it was a rough. disgusting yeah. game on that Zed. TSM as a whole has been adapting very well to the series. They yeah. correctly identified TF as the problem and not the GP. Yep. So when they come back to red side, they ban the TF out, which uh, Jensen pretty much carried on the first game. Mm -hmm. And then the Zed, like you said, was such a great pick there. I, Initially thought like, oh, they're just gonna run a zero again. He's been doing pretty well, but given the squishies, given that they already have a ton of magic damage, they go for Zed. Really seemed like it surprised uh, C9, and then he just outperformed Jensen when you compare their Zed games. He got a solo kill in lane, and right. Jensen wasn't able to do anything. And I'm glad he played for that because this composition could have been set up for a Varus mid. Of course, you'd have the mix of physical damage from the Varus and then Corky with the magic damage, and just run a poke comp because you already had Janna and you had Maokai. And then he's like, no, I'm gonna be a man. It's playoffs. I'm gonna step up. And Bjergsen, <laughs> this is his best game of the split so far. Yeah, I mean, it's very interesting the fact that they, we talk about Champion Select and we're hammering it quite a lot, but it was such an important element of the way that TSM is coming back in this series is they had the options. We talked about Jensen being the versatile mid laner, the guy who can play LeBlanc and be a playmaker, TF in effect of the lanes, or even be a team fighter. Bjergsen can do those same things, and yep. we sometimes forget about that because they haven't been so mid-centric this season that mm -hmm. we forget about these things, and then lo and behold, he could have pulled out the Azir if he wanted to and taken that matchup, yep. the Varus and played poke, or do the Zed and style on kids like he did this time. Cloud9 popping up on our screens here. Less smiles. You know, yeah, definitely less smiles. I mean, things it's game point now for, uh, or match point rather, for TSM. So C9, they've got some stuff to think about. Yeah, C9 are getting crushed this game, and it's because of the jungler who I just mentioned here. Mm -hmm. uh, Rush has first picked Kindred, blue side, both games. He was not the reason they won the game, the first one they did, and he's part of the reason they're losing the games they aren't. Zyrene, you keep mentioning the warding stats. Well, it's because he's going challenging smite no sights in every game. Like, the junglers are the reason for that ward difference. It's not high. You can't really blame him in any specific way. It is literally Rush saying, F wards, I'm going damage, and he's doing some, but he's dying a hell of a lot too. Two, six, and five. Three, seven, and one most recently. Uh, what are you even doing? Yeah, and this is not a new thing for Rush. Remember back on TIP, he was the lowest warding jungler, but sure. Adrian was the highest warding support and covered his back. So... This is how you have to play when you have Rush, is somebody needs to pick up that slack. But he also needs to actually make ganks work, right? Yes. Like, we come into this being like, yeah, Rush is so dominant, he's awesome, and he's never quite been that 2015 Rush, but now he's even below that, yeah, right. right? Like, well, now he's actually not getting a lot bad done. Games. We've actually seen three 2v1s, which I think is helping TSM a lot, because they're able to avoid one of C9's biggest strengths, which is Rush carrying them in the early game. In 2v1s, junglers get a little bit more limited, they need to be certain places at certain times. You can't be as predictable, which is something Rush is amazing at. He always does, like, the change-up play on you. And this is one of those situations where now we're focusing in on Rush. He's played Kindred three times. You have to wonder how Cloud9 might be able to pivot in order to open him up to other jungle options, if anything. Do they just abandon, uh, you know, banding, banning anything on the red side in the jungle so as to leave a larger pool open? Maybe they get him something else that he can play effectively, at least switch things up. Now, we do have a tweet to highlight TSM's mid laner coming from Braden Clark, who writes, this is a classic Gerson carry game. He's got something to prove against Jensen in the mid lane, and he is going to step it up today. I mean, I think he did just that, as you mentioned, the stat line already, Zyrene. Yeah, and he said it's a classic Bjergsen game. We haven't seen a real classic Bjergsen game in a long time. Yeah. And now we're seeing him return to form just in time for playoffs. It's like TSM effect. Every time you show up to playoffs, your players step up, and then you end up having two threats on your team. Yeah, the solo kills, the splitting, getting his own kills. He was just constantly a threat, and C9 had no answer. It, they couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, without a doubt, there will be some highlight reel plays for him out of that game. TSM are just one win away from locking up their spot in the semifinals, and we'll be right back with Game 4 against Cloud9 in just a few minutes. You're watching the North American Spring Playoffs. Be right back. Thanks for reminding me. Digging that Maokai build, Kevin. Huh? I mean, if I was playing Zed and I was walking into land against QSS and, like, Four armor items. <laughs> oh, you have QSS as well? I would be like, huh, I think I'm just gonna group this. We see High going down on the Braum. That's a kill for Haunter. Rush is gonna fall as well. Jungler on jungler. He's just go Braum, go Braum. 
Nice. I got a tick tower, tick tower, tick tower. Tick tower. Nice. I'll take your vision. Good shit. You winning me. Gin flash, gin flash. Oh, I'm gonna catch up in the back. <coughs> Alright. Oh, oh, what the fuck, what the fuck? Oh, oh shit, thanks, bro. Oh, shit. Absolutely melting. Lambs were spite the last thing, saving them from being six feet under here. And there's a kill onto Sneaky in an even stronger fashion. TSM take game three of the series.